It was quite an eventful first day for the Louisville Cardinals in the opening day of the underclassmen transfer portal. Louisville lost a handful of players. We'll talk about why it shouldn't surprise you of the big-time roster turnover. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. Back like he never left. Grant Mulligan back on for this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. Portal is back. running wild. Grant is the state of Louisville football analyst. G Money, what's up, brother? Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Back like back he never back. left, dude. Back like I never back. left. Jordan 9697. Whoa. Very but never mind. I'm not gonna start. Such a good song, man. Shout out to I haven't Jordan. heard that song in so long, but it's still so stuck in my head. I remember it's the day it dropped. Rolling. I remember the day it dropped, summer 2015. But regardless, um 2015 one day, that was nine years ago yeah, almost. Man. But hey, speaking of memorable days, yesterday, Monday, the day the underclassmen transfer portal opened up, and wow, what an eventful day it was. We knew that Louisville was going to lose some players, but they ended up losing um, six by our count. Now it is 5.30 on Monday when we recorded this being released on Tuesday at midnight. So if someone enters Monday evening, well, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But just understand that this is being recorded Monday evening, 5.36 Eastern time. Um, beginning, well, I will tell you that the players that have transferred are announced that they'll enter the portal. Josh Minkins, Marquise Groves, Killebrew. Uh, Vic Brown, Popeye Williams, Jackson Hamilton, and Isaiah Reed. Starting out, Grant, I think that the point we need to get across here is that roster turnover is extremely expected in the portal, um, especially for guys that um, either have seen playing time being taken away or just haven't really been able to see the field a ton. Yeah, this is just the nature of the sport we're living in now, and I'm never going to blame a kid for trying to find an opportunity that works better for them. Uh, a lot of the guys that we've lost, in fact, all the all the guys that we've lost are are still roster holdovers from the Satterfield era, either recruits or guys who were actually on the team uh, at the time whenever he was there. The truth of the matter is, Sometimes the scheme fit just doesn't work for your style as a player, and that's okay. And there's also nothing wrong with, with sticking around a year to try to see how you would fit into the machine and then it not working out. Nothing wrong with that at all. I wish all these kids the best. I really hope that they, they find playing time and a great role in the next opportunity. But I don't think that this is anything for the fans to freak out over. I mean, Georgia loses players. Alabama loses players. It's just the nature of the game right now. Kids want to be able to play, or they just – don't feel like the fit is right, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, wish them all the best, but no reason to panic. Yeah, I, I mean, it, that's the the bad part about the portal. Obviously, the transfer portal is extremely exciting because you can do what Louisville did last year, and you can absolutely transform your team via the portal. And Braum was one of the big-time portal winners last year, and he has a chance to do the same thing this year. I feel like we're still – we might not have seen the the – long-term effects of the portal yet i feel like it's like opening pandora's box and nothing's really been able to keep it in check yet so i think we're going to continue to see it get crazier until it mellows out and oh, i don't think that right. we're around that yet so i think that you know you're going to see more players enter the portal for louisville it was expected guys that aren't playing for multiple years possibly likely to leave um, what you have to do now if you're Jeff Brom and company is hold on to the key parts of this core. And if they enter the draft, you know what? They enter the draft. That is what it is. But there's always the real possibility that the guys who hadn't transferred yet, bigger schools are going to try to come in and poach your players. It's happening all across the country. You'd be a fool to believe that Louisville is exempt from that. So roster retention is almost as key as roster additions in this era. Absolutely. And a, a great adage, this one's more for the general workforce, but it absolutely applies here. If nobody is trying to hire away your employees, what does that say about the employees that you have? You have great employees. Huh? 
<laughs> what do you say? You have a non-compete clause. They have a non-compete clause. Okay, anyways. Um, just like the sponsor LinkedIn. I'm just playing. Um, you could have absolutely done a live read off of that one because I did a hey, job. I still have a couple minutes left in this segment. Give me some time to cook. Let him cook. Wait, let me let cook. cook. I'll let you cook. But anyways. Oh, no, he burned down the kitchen. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> back on back on topic. When you have players that are talented, bigger schools are going to try and come get them. That yeah. and and you have to you have to keep your guys in it. You have to re-recruit your roster every single year, mm-hmm. and and that goes for even the the larger schools because guys who you may think, man, they're really promising. I just I, I'm they're not ready to play yet, but I just need to to hold them onto the roster for another year so we can get some of the older players out of their way and get them into playing time. Mm-mm-mm. That's what. Someone else got your really promising player because you weren't able to offer him playing time soon enough. That's just the nature of it. Talented uh, people in the workforce. Employers want to hire them. Talented players in college football. Teams want them. If nobody wants your players, probably don't have a good team. <laughs> that's just the nature of it. No, I agree, and I think that that's something that we oftentimes overlook as a college football fan base throughout the nation, uh, not just Louisville, but as fans of college football college sports in general because it's happening in basketball and other sports as well is that if insert player's name here is a highly rated player you get him to commit but he might take some time to develop insert players here name believes that he's ready to see the field earlier than you believe he's ready to see the field and insert player name here looks to leave your school. That is the tricky part. And I think, you know, we talk about, well, the high school recruiting classes are, um, you know, pretty small the past couple classes for Brom. Well, number one, last year he came in in December, so hard to work with there. This year it's smaller because you're utilizing the portal more. And that's the thing about it is, is that we have to understand is that high school classes are by nature going to be smaller, not just because of portal options and having – uh, immediately available help. But number two is that you use all these resources for highly rated players that might not necessarily be ready to come in and play right away. They don't like their situation and then they leave. It's happening all over the country. And we've seen it happen the past 24 hours. Really talented guys in the past couple of classes that didn't see a lot of the field year one, year two. Now they're going elsewhere looking for a change of scenery. Right. And everything that I've heard, everything that I've heard for Brom at least pointed to the 25 class is really where he was going to start rolling with the high school kids. And that's where they're going to put their focus. So this isn't none of this of what's happening so far is a surprise to me at all. Everything that I've heard that this was always the plan Portal heavy first two off seasons. 25 is really where we're going to start laying the groundwork with them, the high school recruiting. Expect to see, as of right now, obviously a lot can change in a year. Expect to see the largest high school class or at least the the highest rated uh, high school class that Brahms had so far uh, and and see a smaller portal class mm-hmm. the following off season. That's, no. yeah, that's my expectation agree. fully right now. And that's always, from my understanding and from everything that I've heard, that has always been the plan. Don't take this as me saying that Brahm is just going to completely do away with high school recruiting. Obviously, that is not the case, and he's going to prioritize players for certain. But I think the days of signing 25 off the bat are going to be more and more rare, especially for uh, for a place like Louisville. Maybe not Maybe some of the blue blood programs, but definitely I think in a place like Louisville, no disrespect intended. Um, but – Let's talk about the six players that have entered so far as of 543 Eastern Daylight Time on the Eastern Coast. Um, We'll talk about three and three in the next two segments. Uh, First off, we'll – five of these are on the defensive side of the ball. We'll talk Josh Minkins, Marquise gross Kilbrew, and Vic Brown here in the next segment. We'll do that after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Game Time. I know that the season is over for football, um, but game time spans far beyond the sports realm. You have music, comedy, theater, etc. With last-minute deals, all-in prices, view from your seat, and more. 
especially the best price guarantee, it takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal. There's no more. Your ticket is $38 subtotal, and then your in total is 156 There's no more of that. You get to see everything right up front with game time. My favorite is the last-minute guarantee, so that means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time will credit 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, terms apply, create an account, redeem the code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. There's been six players so far, Grant, that have entered the portal for the Wolver Cardinals. I think most of these were unexpected, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase, both of these were expected. There's one or two that's maybe unexpected. The one for me, and this has been a guy who took a little bit of a step back in terms of um, production this year, that's Josh Minkins. The 502 native um, ended the season or will have ended his Louisville career probably with 21 tackles. Last year, he had 55. He had three pass deflections, one sack, one forced fumble, one interception this year. 21 total tackles, and that's pretty much about it. He had some trouble with um, with coverage ability. Now, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe I saw his mom tweet out um, something along the lines of maybe Louisville, this more so being a decision from Louisville side than Minkin's side. Um, regardless, it's tough to lose someone from your backyard. That's true, and I wish him the best, truly, because he was a great ambassador for the program. He knew what the, what the name of the front of the jersey meant. Mm-hmm. And he led that. I mean, he he put on for the city. Uh, he cared immensely. And uh, I, I wish him absolutely the best going forward. Uh, I'll always appreciate his time here and, and what he did for the program, both in terms of play on the field and the love that he had for it as a true Louisville native. Uh, yeah. the, the fact of the matter, though, was that his role was, was surpassed uh, in the safety room. Uh, he, he took more of a back seat, more uh, lost playing time to guys like Cam Kelly, Devin Neal, and absolutely if MJ Griffin was healthy, uh, it's hard which for me. He will be, for which he will be coming so next. You do, you do bring MJ Griffin back. Bring back. Um, so it's just hard to, to project minutes. He had some struggles this year in coverage, got burnt more times than one. Um, so not really surprised to me. I, I kind of saw this one coming. I, I wish him, like I said, I wish him the best. But going forward, it was just really hard to to see a role expanding for him when it really seemed like his role was was shrinking. That's true, and unfortunately, that's sort of the the downside to the portal is you see some players. Josh Minkins, let's be honest, is a fan favorite because of his um, willingness to just be an ambassador for this program when it honestly wasn't popular to do so a couple of years ago. So. I wish him the best, man. I really hope that he finds a spot to where he feels comfortable, and I hope he balls out in the NFL. I, I really do. Hope he does. One name, I think the one name people were really con- – not maybe not concerned about, but really confused about was Marquise Groves Killebrew. Uh, the transfer from Texas A&M had some local ties. Um, didn't see a lot of time at A&M due to injury. He transferred to Louisville. Didn't see a lot of time either. Played behind Jarvis Brownlee, Storm Duck, Quincy Riley. But even with Brownlee out and those guys substituting in and out, MGK really didn't see much of a role. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I assume he's going to maybe get another red shirt. How does I don't know how that works for, um, you know, if he's got to sit out or not. But I really from, don't know. I don't know either. That's why I don't want to speculate. But from what I heard is that it seemed like he wasn't going to see a lot of the field moving forward. So, um, you know, I'm not really sure what to make of this. What are your thoughts on MGK deciding to look for a different, uh, different university? I'm not surprised there. I'm not going to speak on it a whole lot, but there is more to the story on that one. I uh, wish him the best going forward. Um, I think I, I think I know what you're alluding to, but I I'm gonna leave, leave it, it, leave it at that. I'm yeah. Leave it there. I, I wish him the best. He's obviously immensely talented. Uh, he had a very high four-star ranking, great physical tools, just hasn't seemed to, to put it together to get on the field. I uh, hope he finds a, I hope he finds a fit that, and he can, and he can work things out. I agree but there. He's transferring. Yeah, I, um, I agree there. 
a name, another name that I'm not really surprised about, uh, Vic Tone Brown, uh, was a key piece of that 2021 recruiting class and um, really just never uh, could crack into the depth chart uh, from Grayson High School down in Georgia. That's a very, very talented program. Um, that's sort of, like I said, the downfall is that, you know, you only have so many spots. Ashton Gelati has had that spot. Uh, he was a pretty much an unexpected uh, diamond in the rough from that 21 class. And then you had Yaya for the two years. And then this year, Stephen Heron. Uh, yeah, Riley guys, in there too. Yeah, Mason Riger. And just overall, I think that the writing might be on the wall. Uh, Adonijah Green is another player that I could see getting some time and then you have the portal as well. So Vic Brown entering the portal. This one, I I always wanted it for him to get on the field because I always felt like he was immensely talented. I did too. And coming out of high school, I'm I'm honestly more surprised than not that he wasn't able to to put it I together. I agree. I thought that he was going to be able to put it together. And like I said, maybe a change of scenery will do him best. Maybe he needs to see uh, some more snaps to get going. And I hope so. Like all these guys, I wish him the best. There's no ill will towards any of them, but – I of if you had told me pick five players from twenty one class from five oh twenty one that you think is going to show out, Vic Brown was probably top three. I think you're right. Uh, the, he he was a great player on the field in, in high school. Uh, he he has a great college ready frame. He's got the size. He just he's a victim of a really crowded room and a staff that wasn't the one who recruited him. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Also, the maybe the scheme fit was a little tougher for him. Although he was one of the ones who I thought would be better transit, just because he has that body type. I felt like he would be able to better transition to end right. and a lot of the edge guys that we had already had on the roster since they were for the most part outside linebackers, uh, looking for that three four type body. But right. he was in a really crowded room, really deep room, and I mean they got some young guys ahead of him as well. So I just. I think it was a holdover from a previous staff. Didn't get enough opportunity to show his worth. And mm-hmm. Just really, really talented, really crowded room ahead of him. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see where he goes next because he doesn't have a lot of tape to, to put out there uh, in terms of game tape so far. But he, he had a ton of production in high school, a lot of talent. Um, the potential's there. The potential's there, and I, I hope that it still is. I agree there. I think that um, personally, like I said, that that's the the thing for me is that you kind of look back and it just goes to show you there's so much more that comes into play rather than just um, you know strictly a skill set. There's got to be the right thing is aligning on the depth chart. It has to be the right scheme, et cetera. So I think that this is going to be a situation to where I can see Vic Brown succeeding at another spot, and I desperately hope that he does because I'm um, really cool dude and wish him the best of luck. Three other players though, Popeye Williams, Jackson Hamilton, Isaiah Reed. We'll talk about what them entering the portal means for the program moving forward. We'll do that here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at, um, I clicked the absolute wrong uh, sponsor love FanDuel and we'll talk about FanDuel as the week goes along but you mentioned LinkedIn jobs so I feel like I am, am obligated to now tell you about how LinkedIn jobs can help your small business look when you're hiring for your small business you want as many top tier candidates as possible to interviewer or to interview gosh I can't speak Grant has me rattled but I know that small businesses wear so many hats Time is of the essence. You don't have a ton of resources. LinkedIn makes your job easier. The process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Grant, if you're done fooling around and and getting me distracted, um, let's talk about the three other players. One that, man, you saw it coming. And I hated to see it coming because I felt like he could have been a star here. That's Popeye Williams. Yeah. Is this is the one that, that hurts the most because I not only did I love what he was as a player, he just was a great kid and he loved the university. He stayed through during the coaching change. This is one of those situations where I think he was a super specific scheme fit. I think he is meant for a three, four defense. 
He's got that bot. He's got that three, four body type, the, that outside linebacker. I don't think it's a problem. Excuse me. I don't think it's a problem with talent with him. I just think that he, he just doesn't have the body type that they're looking for uh, to play defensive end or to, to play Leo uh, in this defense. And I think that he's going to have to find the right three, four defense that is going to work for him. It's just, he he's a player and this isn't meant to be a slight to him in any way, no disrespect at all, but right. I think he requires a very specific defensive scheme for him to be successful or for his skill set to fit his skill set and body type. I, I to see fit. what you're saying. Yeah. I don't um, think four two five really granted a ton of opportunity for no, him to get a ton I just of did, uh, reps. I think that he was through and through he's a he's a three four outside rush linebacker and that's just not what this defense was so i think he's going to be a stu- he if there's going to be a oh no come Uh-oh. on the cat come makes on. an appearance on the show shout out to the cat it's the second that's her second appearance hey man she has not I'm come on in a few episodes but i yeah anyways um if there's a guy in our portal class the parting portal class who I feel the strongest about being a success with another school and with another large school, uh, it's going to be Popeye. I I I think he could absolutely Mm -hmm. be a stud and a three, four defense. I think the best is very much yet to come with him. I hate losing him, but the truth of the matter is that he just wasn't a scheme fit for this defense. It's, he's just a different player. (laughs) I am getting really large Cincinnati vibes with this one. We'll see. He's I, better I, than them. I so. can see it. Yeah, but it's Power 5 Conference. W- whatever. It is what it is. It's not my job to know where he's going. Um, Jackson Hamilton saw increased play at the linebacking core this year. Um, redshirted year one. Had four tackles in 2022. That moved up to number uh, or two. 11 and 23 had a pass deflection as well. Saw some rotational uh, roles. Um, TJ Quinn, Jalen Alderman look like they're projected to be starters, if not role players at the very least. I I feel like this makes a lot of sense too. I feel like Hamilton's another guy that could go power five and have a pretty solid college career. Yeah. He just got lost in the shuffle. Linebacker shook out in a way that it's a weird spot, man. Like there were so many safeties converted to linebackers. Yeah. So it just it shook out strange. I did not. We didn't see, see much like, Keith Brown either. No, we didn't, and that's why I'm like Keith Brown is probably a better player than Jackson Hamilton too, and he didn't see a lot of clock. So it, the room shook out weird. I, I just wasn't. That's one of the the rooms where I feel like I was pretty off base in how I projected things to be, and obviously. Staff knew best because TJ Quinn had a monster year. Great for him. I said he was uh, going to. Hey, I said did. it. I, hey, he was uh, he was huge in the spring game, and oh. he put them all on notice then, and he did nothing to to slow it down after that. So really, really happy for TJ. But I think that that room's a tough projection. I mean, it's just I did mm-hmm. not see that starting group fan out that way. I didn't see Keith mm-hmm. Brown getting as little time as he did. Right. So we'll see. It ended up being a much stronger group than I expected it to as well. So that's very true. That is very just, true. I don't know. That that one's just hard to speak on because that one just shook out so odd. But for the yeah. best. And yeah. Jackson, he was, you know, he, he'll he'll have some interest elsewhere. Wish him yeah, the best. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That 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 room just shook out weird. That is true. And in the last, but certainly not least, Isaiah Reed, um, a lower rated offensive lineman coming out of high school. Um, I feel like Satterfield recruited a couple lower rated guys that just didn't necessarily pan out here. Isaiah Reed, unfortunately, being one of those players, um, you know, I think that at at the most you lose depth. And like I said, I hope Reed goes somewhere where he's able to play a ton of snaps. Yeah, and the thing that he has going for him is that offensive linemen are always going to be something that is of need. Oh, yeah. So I think he'll he'll get looks. There's going to be interest. There's going to be interest for sure. Uh, again, it's just another group that he hit really hard in the portal, and mm. he's. I think we're going to see gonna hit more. it hard again, man. He's going to hit, hit it hard, hard again. Yeah. Um, 
It's just some really talented guys at the top of the lineup. He grabbed some really great starters, some really great depth guys. Got some guys who rose up the depth chart who I didn't – even he's Austin Collins, hell of a year for him. It shocked a lot of people. Didn't expect to see him come mm-hmm. in as the the spot starter at right guard for the rest of the time. But yeah. the room became crowded very quickly, and you've got some really sharp young talent on the rise as well. Let's not forget about Luke Burgess and Madden Sanker who have that upside yep. pointing up. So, And yeah. also, a lot of reports saying Joe Crocker looked really good last camp. I was about to mention so, him. So. so it became a crowded room really quickly, and that it's a great problem to have. I hate to lose kids. I hate that it didn't work out for kids because obviously they come here for a reason. Mm-hmm. But Brom created a lot of crowded rooms with a lot of talent. So it's our offensive line, one of the deepest we've had in, in recent memory for me this last season. I see no reason why that won't continue. Uh, he just – another guy who got lost in the shuffle was just too many yeah. guys with talent in there. I do agree. And it's worth noting that, you know, like I said, roster turnover is going to happen. This will not be the last uh, amount of players that leave Louisville. There are going to be more players to enter the portal. Thankfully, at this time, and this is no disrespect to any of the six that have entered, I don't think that this any of these six are all that surprising, maybe a little bit unexpected, but not all that surprising. And I don't think that this really puts too much into effect for 2024. If anything, it just number one opens up scholarships for more guys to go out and get. But also I think that it just continually hammers home the point that depth is going to be key. And you're essentially recruiting your whole roster every single season. So that's something that you have to focus on, but we're going to have a ton of portal talk. We haven't even gotten into the holiday bowl matchup against the Caleb Williams, less USC Trojans. Um, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Going to be more portal talk on this week of the Locked On Global podcast. Everyone have a great Tuesday. We'll see you right back here really soon.